Oh, well, oh, that's too bad, Sarah. Well, you did call in enough time. I can get a replacement for you. Oh, okay, Sarah. I hope you feel better. Bye-bye. Before we leave this section on nonverbal communication, I want to share with you three facts that I find astounding. Our body language communicates 55% of our communication. So how we're holding our position is going to tell people 55% of what we're intending to communicate to them. Our tone of voice accounts for 38% of our communication. So if we're angry and we have body language that shows that and our voice becomes sharp and more stern, that's going to communicate a message to that person. Now your actual words make up only 7% of the communication. So while it's important that you carefully choose your words, as you can see, it's even more important that your body language and tone of voice go with those carefully chosen words. Because with body language and tone of voice, that's giving that message 93%. This is an astounding fact, one that's very important to, for you to remember when you think miscommunication is taking place. We're going to go now to the four communication styles. Three of these communication styles don't work well at all and will guarantee to get us into trouble. And one of the communication tr styles is the one that works. So we're going to take a look at the same situation using the four different communication styles. In this scenario, two employees are concerned about call lights getting answered. Mary Lou in the flowered blouse has a concern that she's doing most of the answering of the call lights. And Kathy, in the vest, has a concern that she's answering most of the call lights. So let's take a look at the passive style first. Mary Lou continually takes in what Kathy has to tell her, and she obediently goes about and does what Kathy tells her to do. Now this is passive because Mary Lou is getting frustrated with Kathy. She's thinking that she's doing most of the call lights. But pay attention and see if Kathy's getting this idea with Mary Lou's passive style of communication. Let's take a look at that now. Mary Lou, can you get that call light? Well, I suppose I could get this one too. What's another call light? Well, I've gotten a lot of them this afternoon. You haven't really taken that many call lights. Well, as long as I'm going down the hall, is there anything else you'd like me to do? Well, now that you mention it, there's a bathroom on the end of the hall that's really messy. If you could kind of clean that up a little when you go down there, it'd be greatly appreciated. All right. Now, do you think Kathy has any idea how disgusted Mary Lou's getting with the work situation? Mary Lou probably will remain disgusted, and if she stays in that passive communication style, she's going to choose to go work somewhere else. But she's going to find herself in that same situation unless she changes her communication style. Now, the next communication style we're going to look at is aggressive. And you can tell an aggressive communication style because there's somebody attacking and someone defending. After that person defends themselves, they attack back. So you'll say, well, you don't do this. Oh, yeah, well, I do too, but you don't do this. I think we can clearly see the aggressive style in this next example. Mary Lou, can you get the call light? I'm sick of getting all the call lights. You haven't been getting call lights at all this afternoon. I've been doing all the work. How can you say that you're doing all the work? You're just sitting here. I've been sitting here until a call light goes off and I'm getting up and I'm taking care of it. Well, you've just been sitting there all the way through. You don't do anything. I don't think that's fair for you to say that I don't do anything because I do. Fine. I'll get the manager and have them settle it. You just go ahead and do that and I'll talk to her too and let her know how much you actually do. Fine. I think they're so busy deciding who's the worst person that they'll never get that call light answered. Let's look at a third example, which is called passive aggressive. And this is where you give one set of impression to a person and then you turn around and attack them later. 
In this scenario, Betty's going to be entering in on the scene, and she's going to be asking for a report to be filled out. Now, Kathy's going to be very nice to her face, but when she leaves, she's going to start attacking her. This work situation will continue to go on unless their communication style changes. But let's take a look right now at what the passive-aggressive communication style looks like. There's some documents you're supposed to sign and date. Nice outfit, Betty. Thank you, Kathy. Oh, you're looking really good. Well, thank you. Um, there's a call light. Do you think you could get it? Sure. My God, she is the laziest person I know. I'm telling you, you got to tell her to do every little thing that there is to be done. She won't do it on her own. Nothing. I'm sick of working with her. She's the only person that I know that I have to constantly tell, get the call light, Betty, get the call light, Betty. Everyone else at least hears it and takes care of it. Some people. Oh, I know. At least there's us. We're the hardest workers there are. That's true. You can see how the passive-aggressive can lead into gossip and how this feeds off of each other. And that problem's still not going to be taken care of. Now, you're going to be exposed to all of those communication styles. But I'd like to have you take a look at what I consider the best communication style. And that's the assertive technique. And this works because it focuses on the issue. So you get away from that pointing your finger and blaming or, or being afraid to say what you feel. So let's take a look at this in action and see that how it can make a difference. Mary Lou, could you get the call light? Oh, Kathy, I've gotten so many call lights today. Can't you just get it? I've been getting just as many as you've been getting today. Oh, we got to do something about this. Well, what about if we meet over breakfast in the morning and try to work it out so that we're both getting an equal amount of call lights and that things are working out good for the resident? I like that idea. Okay, how about I meet you at 7 for breakfast? Sounds good. Okay. Now, I've had people look at this and say, yeah, like that's ever going to happen. But if you remember, you have control over how you respond. And if you use this approach and use the assertive style of communication, you're going to find that same success. Finally, we're going to address listening. First of all, let's consider why we want to become an active listener. Well, one reason is that people can free themselves of troublesome feelings when they're encouraged to express them openly. The best example I can think of is when you've lost someone that's close to you and you find yourself crying or you find yourself hurting. If someone's interested and wants to listen to you, you'll find yourself able to express what's painful to you in the loss of that person and you begin to heal this way. So that's one good reason to be an active listener. Another reason is that it promotes a relationship of warmth between the speaker and the listener. If you know I have an interest in what you have to say, you're going to connect with me and you're going to feel that I'm a caring person. A third reason is that it helps with problem solving. If I'm listening to you and encouraging you to express yourself, you're going to find that you're going to come up with different solutions to problems. A fourth reason is that it encourages a mutual concern. The person will be more willing to listen to your thoughts and feelings. I'm interested in you, you're interested in me. And pretty soon we're working together to solve problems. The fifth reason is that it'll keep the ownership of the issue with the person. This is your issue, I'm willing to listen to you, but I need to keep focusing and back on you so that you begin to deal with it. And finally, an empathetic understanding can bring about positive changes. And what does this mean? This means that I'm with you, I'm understanding what you have to say, and I care very much about it. And although it's still your issue, you know you've got a friend and a good listener so that you can bring about those changes. Now, you have to have a special attitude when you're listening to someone, and these are very important. Number one,